Welcome back to the channel guys, it's me Adam, you're watching Steady Invest, and in this video we're going to be talking about ETFs uh, that I would hold until retirement. Now I don't hold any ETFs personally, I like stock picking too much, however ETFs are a great way to diversify your portfolio, especially if you aren't comfortable stock picking or it's just not your thing. Uh, but I do enjoy looking at ETFs and comparing them and I will drop an ETF video every so often. So. The first one I'm going to mention, it is a Canadian ETF. Uh, I am Canadian, I do live in Canada. Uh, so for all my Canadian followers, this is an ETF. It's an all-in-one that I really, really like. I've mentioned it before on the channel. It's called HGROW, ticker symbol HGRO, trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. It's Horizons Growth ETF portfolio. The management expense ratio is 0.16%. However, the ETF is subject to fees of underlying ETFs, which is kind of annoying. Uh, which would probably add up to about 0.5% more or less. Uh, so you have Horizons US large cap ETF at 32%, the NASDAQ 100 at 20%, the S&P TSX uh, 60 at 17.3%, international developed markets the 14%, and Europe and emerging markets the rest, which are about another 13% uh, or so. And the reason I like HGRO more than I like the Vanguard and the iShares all-in-one ETFs that are all equity are because for two reasons. Number one, uh, HGRO has NASDAQ 100 exposure, whereas the other one, other two do not. And I find that the other two, because they don't have NASDAQ exposure, they're overweight in Canadian equities, whereas I find 17% is a good you know, balance between all, I guess, six of these. Uh, and you can take a look for yourself at, again, it's VEQT and XEQT. And you look at the holdings for those ones, I like HGRO a lot more. If you take a look at ETF breakdown, I like this website a lot. Uh, you can enter in your own ETFs and see how they break down, hence ETF breakdown. I manually in inputted them myself and it's gonna give you roughly, uh, so it looks like, the, and you can see actually over here the, um, the orange text, it shows you from what um, underlying ETF the stock is coming from and the weighting. So you see Apple, Microsoft, your regular S&P 500 names, and then after Tesla you have some Canadian exposure, right? Again, it's a Canadian ETF, so you have RBC, Royal Bank of Canada, TD Bank, uh, Shopify, Scotiabank, Enbridge, uh, and then you have your international names as well, Nestle, uh, Roche, ASML. So uh, I do like HGRO a lot. It's the kind of ETF where if I was working a job, I didn't want to look at the market at all, but I didn't want to pay fees at the bank, and I had no like business wanting to look into stocks whatsoever, this is the ETF that I would look for to get gains, but I'm also super diversified. I think there's 12,000 different companies here. Uh, and yeah, so I never would have a paycheck and I would just add money to the market when uh, it's high, it's low, it wouldn't matter, I would just dollar cost average in. And if you exhibit good, strong spending behaviors and you had a simple plan like that, that is one way to success. Like investing does not have to be difficult. You could retire a multimillionaire that way if you just had great spending habits. But again, to each their own, everyone has their own circumstances, the way they invest, so on and so forth. And as well, I wanna take a look at uh, the candlesticks as well. And you see over here that for some reason, every day it opens up higher and closes negative for some, or not negative, but it closes lower, uh, whether the stock is going up or down. I don't know why that is, so I guess if you want to sell your stock for whatever reason, I guess you could sell it at the beginning of the day, it would make sense. You have a higher probability of uh, making money that way. I don't know, that's kind of weird. But again, it's a very stable stock, even during the correction time uh, for the higher multiple names. Uh, HGRO wasn't hit that hard, it kind of bounced off the uh, 50 moving day average and it's made all time highs again, it's kind of at that point again, so it wouldn't be a terrible place to start a position uh, anywhere near this green line over here. So yeah. So number two, guys, we would have Vanguard's Dividend Appreciation ETF, ticker symbol VIG. The expense ratio is 0.06%, so you would be paying $6 every $10,000 invested, which is very cheap. If we take a look at uh, the portfolio, it's a blend um, of value and growth, and they're large cap companies. And taking a look at the holdings, you have uh, a good weight. If I was a retiree and I wanted to grow my money, but defensively, uh, this is like a, an amazing ETF for that. So Microsoft would be the number one holding at 4%, and then you have JP Morgan Chase, which I mean, in my opinion is the best uh, US bank, Johnson & Johnson, Walmart, Home Depot, and you have a bunch of consumer discretionary companies as well. Uh, so yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great ETF. I really, really like this one, and if we take a look at 
the candlestick six for this one it's never a bad time really to invest in it uh again buy on the dip pretty much if you get near the 50 day moving average or if it dips a little bit below it uh, it seems to like to bounce off that to the upside uh, as well there are options for it but i don't like the options for this etf because they're not that far in the future and a lot of etfs don't have leaps for some reason so these ones only expire in november latest um, i mean it's not a terrible play it's only about sixteen hundred dollars for a 165 strike from 155 and looking at the pattern it should hit that by november i mean you never know what could happen but it's not a bad way to play this etf if you want to play options um i've never done it myself i would be open to it but i would want to do more research before uh before doing so so yeah so number two or number three rather we would have mgc guys and this one is vanguard mega cap etf uh the expense ratio is 0.07 percent so again very cheap if we go to portfolio management again it's the same thing it's a blend of both growth and value large caps and we see here we have apple microsoft the feng uh, companies at the top and you have your value companies so you have berkshire jp morgan johnson and johnson so you see here again how it's a blend there's also the value one the value large one and that one is mgv uh, and that one is again yeah so you see large and value and that one would be uh, berkshire jp morgan all the value names that you see in mgc uh, over here but it makes up the value one. and this one's actually probably done very well uh, during these turbulent times yeah <laughs> it hasn't really seen much of a correction either uh, because of the value names and if you wanted the growth one with just apple uh, without the value names from mgc then that one is mgk and i think those all three of them will have the same expense ratio of 0.07 percent i believe it but instead of mgk i actually like vug more it has an expense ratio it's a little bit cheaper at 0.04 percent uh, and there are little differences in the holdings but it's very very similar it's just cheaper and if we look at the holdings, it would be like MGC, just without the value name. So Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, all the uh, mega cap uh, growth companies. And last but not least, guys, I'm also still a big fan of ARK Invest ETFs and Kathy Wood. Although they have been beaten down very badly over the last couple of months, they are full of quality companies. And this is just a buying opportunity, honestly. Like on the charts, it's almost oversold. It was oversold for a little bit, maybe a couple days ago. It, it looks like it wants to come back, not for sure. It still could have some downside, but we have it for so much cheaper. It's at such a discount to where it was a few months ago, and you're getting November pricing, which is a blessing for long-term investors. And as well, ArcW, it's very similar, except for they have Grayscale Bitcoin as one of the top holdings, and there's other differences as well in the ETF. However, they all trade more or less the same, ARK, ArcW. They're not exactly the same, but they're very similar. And remember with ARK and ARKW, Tesla makes up a big portion of both of them at 10%. And we can see that Tesla hasn't beaten down over the last few months as well. So it makes sense that they both kind of been trading very similarly. And we see Tesla right now is at a very crucial point. They're at the 200 moving day average on the chart. Uh, we're right at that support line. If we break that, we could see down to 500, even 400. I don't know if that will happen. It's very possible, but it's very possible we could also be bouncing off this 200 moving day average and start recovering again maybe we'll chop sideways who knows uh the next few months could be very volatile so whatever fits your plan whatever fits your goals uh that's it for my etfs guys thank you very much for watching uh and if you haven't already like the video subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video